Thank you. We now move to topical questions. Question number one, James Thornland. What support it will provide to the Glasgow School of Art following the fire at the weekend? Cabinet Secretary Fiona Hislop. Uh, President Officer, the First Minister has today announced a package of support for the Glasgow School of Art following the devastation of the fire at the Mac building on Friday of last week. This includes the development of a Phoenix bursary scheme to support students most affected by last week's fire to rebuild their portfolio. Up to £5 million match funding has also been announced for Glasgow School of Arts Macintosh Building Fire Fund and additional support for any longer term funding requirements for building recovery and restoration following full evaluation of insurance liability. The Scottish Government and our agencies have been working tirelessly to support GCA staff since Friday afternoon and will continue to provide technical, logistical survey and conservation advice and support. And, presiding officer, in closing, can I restate our gratitude uh, for the remarkable work of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, whose pro professionalism and early strategic decision making saved 90% of the building and 70% of its content. Yeah, yeah. James Donner. Thank you, President Officer. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. I would also like to thank the Fire and Rescue Service for the fantastic work they did last Friday. I don't think I'm alone in th thinking it's difficult to remember an occasion when a fire, which thankfully there were no fatalities or even injuries, has been met with such an outpouring of shock and loss. But to know that thanks to their work, way above and beyond the call of duty, we'll be able to rebuild this iconic masterpiece is something we should be eternally grateful for. I know my colleague Sandra White, who is away in parliamentary business, would like to have spoken on this and asked this qu the question. I am also aware she has been speaking to yourself and residents and students and community council. And she, like me, would like to know what assessment has been made of what can be salvaged from the fire damage west end of the building and what has been lost. Um, I, I thank the member. I have tried to keep all the uh, interested parties updated. I spoke to Sandra White on Saturday and I have uh, communicated with regional MSPs to make sure that they've been updated. Um, in terms of what can be salvaged, it is very early days, but I can say in terms of conservation, the early actions that have been taken um, over the weekend and continue to be taken are really important in terms of the restoration. Uh, we have world-class expertise in Glasgow School of Art working with Historic Scotland in terms of 3D scanning of the building as it is now, uh, but some of that emergency conservation is very important indeed, and in relation to what is being salvaged, uh, we are looking at trying to make sure we have conservation, not just for the works of art, the historic works of art and the content of the building, but also for the students. It's very important that we uh, retrieve their works of art and conserve as much as possible, and Historic Scotland is taking a lead in both those exercises. Mr Donald. Thanks again. I mean, I'm delighted to hear the, the comments about the work that's going to be done to protect or uh, help the students with some of the work that has been lost. I, I spoke earlier about the shock and loss, and uh, this just goes to show you the deep affection for the Macintosh building, not just in Scotland, but across the world. What support can the Scottish Government provide to the Glasgow School of Art to take advantage of this international interest in raising funds to return the building to its former glory? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I can confirm that the Scottish Government will use all our networks and agencies internationally to raise the profile of the Macintosh Fire Fund and encourage contributions to that fund. But I would reiterate, uh, we love the building and the building has iconic symbolism, not just uh, in Scotland, it is a work of art in itself, but also internationally. But I would stress that at this time, it's important that we support the students um, and they are the artists and the, the geniuses of ideas for the future. Drew Smith. Officer, can I associate myself with the comments of the Cabinet Secretary and Mr Donan regarding the uh, Scottish Fire and Rescue um, Service? I am sure the whole of Parliament um, would echo um, those and can also thank her for the update that she provided to, to Glasgow members over the holiday weekend. Um, we do not know uh, if, a, if a more advanced fire um, prevention system would have been of great assistance um, in, this, in this case, but it is, of course, a, a tragic item that that work was, was, was planned but had not um, been completed before this fire broke out. Can uh, the Cabinet Secretary say whether she's asked um, Historic Scotland to review the uh, fire risk that might face uh, other buildings of, uh, if not quite the same significance um, and affection that the School of Art has, certainly the estate of many other significant buildings in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I confirm that uh, the Glasgow School of Art Macintosh building had an appropriate fire 
uh, protection for a Grade A listed building, that it's always difficult to ensure an appropriate system. They were doing the right thing in, in, in implementing that, but clearly in terms of the interruption uh, over the period for understandable reasons, that had not as yet been completed. Historic Scotland are constantly working with uh, those in the heritage uh, aspects. Many of them are privately owned buildings. It's not just uh, those that are in the public sector or under, um, uh, under protection of, of government agencies. So that that's under constant review, but I am absolutely clear that uh, Glasgow School of Art have been always been very conscious of the risk. Uh, unfortunately, that risk was realised um, over the weekend. But also, in terms of tributes and thanks, um, I also met with the uh, staff of Glasgow School of Art, Professor Tomins and Muriel Gray, on Saturday, and indeed their senior management team, who had obviously some of them have obviously gone through a great deal over the last 24 hours. But they had been working tirelessly um, to see, make sure there's continuity for students. Uh, but also I reflect and will feed back the question and the points raised to Historic Scotland. Andy Scanlon. Uh, can I acknowledge my party with the tributes to the Fire and Rescue Service? Uh, I heard what the Cabinet Secretary said about recovering as much student work as possible, but can I ask what measures have been put in place to support those students whose degree work has been damaged or lost and who may be embarking on a future career at the moment? Uh, so not only the academic results, but also in terms of the retail value of many of their paintings and works. Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, in terms of insurance, um, that assessment is obviously ongoing. Uh, but in relation to particularly the work, uh, works of, our, of, the, of the students, we want to help them rebuild their portfolios where necessary and indeed um, to, to take advantage of the, the opportunities that are now being um, uh, transmitted in terms of support from other art schools across not just Scotland but the, the rest of the uh, UK and internationally. And indeed, uh, Edinburgh College of Art was one of the first to respond in, in terms of what support they can provide. I would emphasise that the, the Phoenix Bursary Scheme that we're announcing today is precisely to uh, help and assist uh, students going forward. Uh, they will have a bright future. We will all rally to their cause as we will to the building. Um, we have uh, very talented young artists and we owe it to them to make sure in terms of recovery, the recovery of Glasgow School of Art is not just about the building but is also to support the ongoing careers of these very talented artists. Liam McArthur. Thank you. Uh, Presiding officer, as the member for Orkney, can I confirm that the, the strong affection for the Glasgow School of Art is, is something shared right across the, the country and obviously far beyond? And can I associate myself both with the comments that James Dornan made uh, in, in, in moving the question, but also the, the uh, Cabinet Secretary in the response, and also put on record uh, the gratitude of myself and my party for the efforts of the Fire and Rescue Service? Following on from uh, Mary Scanlon's question, the, the bursary itself, obviously there are students that are coming to the, the end of their, uh, their, their degree period. What duration is this bursary uh, due to uh, last for? Is there specific help for those who are at the very end uh, of, their, uh, of their course? Uh, and could you give us a little bit more detail of the nature of the support that might be available in that sense? Uh, my colleague Michael Russell uh, has also been in close contact uh, with Glasgow School of Art and indeed we were in constant touch um, over the weekend. In terms of the discussions that are taking place both with SAS and the Funding Council, more details will uh, come out over the next uh, period. But it is about financial support for people, uh, students perhaps who need more additional time to complete their portfolio. We are very conscious of the importance of that and that is why, although a lot of the international and media focus uh, understandably has been on this internationally iconic building, it really is incumbent on all of us to make sure there's continuity for students in terms of their academic work, but also in terms of completion for those that are reaching their final year. And every effort is being made um, by all the agencies, but particularly by Glasgow School of Art, in terms of their responsibility to their students. Um, and I can give reassurance in that regard. Thank you. Question number two, Elaine Smith. Thank you, President Officer. Can I declare an interest as a member of Unite the Union, who organise at Devro, and because I have friends and family who work there, to ask the Scottish Government what steps it's taking to support Devro and its workforce following the announcement of major job losses? Minister Fergus. Uh, Presiding Officer, John Swinney, the Cabinet Secretary for Finance, Employment and Sustainable Growth, has met with uh, Peter Page, the CEO of Devro PLC. And since the announcement, the Scottish Government, through Scottish Enterprise, have been working very closely with the company. The majority of employment at the Scottish sites is protected and our Partnership Action for Continuing Employment PACE initiative are actively involved to provide support and advice. The Scottish Manufacturing Advisory Service have also been actively involved. 
Devro have been manufacturing in Scotland for over 50 years. Scottish Enterprise have met with Devro and will be actively supporting them through this difficult phase to help them develop their future plans and ensure the long-term sustainability of their business. My ministerial colleagues and I will be kept fully informed of all developments. Lloyd Smith. Well, can I thank the Minister for his response, uh, Presiding Officer, and just say that this news has come as a, a shock since Dave Loire investing and prospering abroad at the moment. Um, does the Minister agree with me, though, that the potential loss of 130 jobs, that's a quarter of Devro's Scottish employees, is a devastating blow for the workforce, for the local economy and the community, since Devro is one of the biggest private sector employers in my constituency? And what firm commitment can the Scottish Government give to fully support the workers who may lose their livelihoods? And can further meetings be held with the company to see if there is any practical government assistance that can be given to try and keep these jobs here in Scotland? Minister. Uh, well, I respect and appreciate the member's close interest in this, and she mentioned that uh, her family and uh, friends are, have uh, involvement at the factory. So this is an extremely serious matter and is taken in that light. Um, and that is why John Swinney met with the chief executive of the company, why Scottish Enterprise has met with the company as well. At the top level, the involvement discussions have included Lena Wilson, the chief executive of Scottish Enterprise, and I'm able to further advise the member that there is a follow-up meeting with the company due on the 30th of May. And plainly, we will take every possible step, both to help secure the long-term future of the company, uh, and uh, it has uh, around 520 employees at its plants in Moodysburn and Bells Hill. The member is correct that the proposed reduction is 130, a very substantial a number indeed, uh, but uh, also the PACE initiative, uh, which has the function of assisting those who are made redundant find other opportunities, have already been alerted, advised, and are ready, willing, uh, and available to provide the assistance to these employees as they do to all other persons who find themselves in Scotland facing the unpleasant threat of redundancy. So I'm happy to assure the member, firstly, that we are doing everything as possible with uh, and through Scottish Enterprise, and secondly, that uh, I will personally make sure that she is kept fully informed of all major further developments. Lynn Smith. Thank you, President Officer. I thank the Minister for, um, for saying that he will keep me informed of developments. But is the Minister aware that two years ago, Devro moved their financial team from Middlesbrough to London, and that in a letter from Chief Executive Peter Page, who the Minister has mentioned, he says that the current changes are part of a programme to refocus and streamline the group's manufacturing worldwide. So can the Minister give any examples of practical assistance that can be given to offer uh, to, given to Devro to ensure that they do continue to manufacture here in Scotland and that they keep their HQ in Moody's Burn? And more generally, can you comment on the Scottish Government's plans to try and stop the decline overall of Scottish manufacturing? Minister. Well, yes, I can and, and yes, I will. First of all, in 2007, Devro was offered RSA of 1.64 million pounds as assistance in implementing a project to improve productivity and product quality uh, to safeguard 200 permanent jobs and to incur capital expenditure of 9.1 million pounds on plant and machinery. That grant, presiding officer, was paid in full and the final instalment in 2012 and project jobs and assets are due to remain in conditions until the 21st of June 2014. Secondly, I understand that in the discussions with uh, the Cabinet Secretary, Mr Page, stressed that this uh, decision was very much part of a review of the company's global operations. Uh, the member will know more about the company than I do from her local knowledge, but my understanding is that Devro are a global company operating in many other countries, including the USA, the Czech Republic and Australia, and that Mr Page took pains to stress to the Cabinet Secretary at their meeting that this was very much a review of their global operations and reflecting dif difficult market conditions. And finally, Presiding Officer, members will know that the difficulties facing Vion, the main sausage producer, uh, led to problems on, uh, ongoing for the sector, and of course, Devro produced uh, collagen sausage casings. 
and Vion was a major customer. So I think we can see that there has been a difficult market situation uh, and we are aware of that, but we continue to provide through Scottish Enterprise every possible support in relation to, con to, to ensuring that uh, uh, the technology at the factory receives investment where possible and that therefore that helps to secure the long-term future of operations in Scotland as the member correctly exhorts us to do. John Wilson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I also declare an interest uh, as a member of Unite, the union which organises in the Devro plant? Can I also put on record my appreciation to Peter Page, uh, Chief Executive, for taking a conference call on Friday morning to discuss these very issues in relation to both the plant at Bells Hill and particularly the one at Moody'sburn? Could the Minister give assurances that not only the constituency member be kept up to date with any developments, but also the other constituency member who's an interest in this, Michael McMahon, and uh, the list members for Central Scotland. Because I think we've all got a duty to assure the communities in both Belso and Moodysburn, and in particular Moodysburn, uh, because of the long association Devro has had with those two areas, that not only the workforce, but the communities have to be keep, kept fully informed of any developments in the future of both plants. Minister. Uh, yes, I'm happy, uh, presiding officer, to provide Mr. Wilson with that assurance that uh, all members having an interest in their constituencies, whether uh, the local constituency or the regional constituency, will be kept advised of any major developments in relation to the Scottish Government's involvement. Uh, and yes, I can also agree with Mr. Wilson that these uh, are extremely important matters and one which we take with the utmost seriousness. The redundancy consultation period has, I believe, begun a few days ago and is a 45-day period. It is planned, I believe, that there are to be redundancies operative in around July and then a further tranche in quarter one next year. And therefore, it would appear that this will be a two-stage process. Obviously, because there is more time, PACE are better able, uh, with the benefit of some notice, to be of practical assistance to many of the individuals involved. And people are made redundant in units of one presiding officer. Each one must be provided with whatever help and assistance can reasonably be provided by PACE, who are very, very good at that particular function in Scotland and uh, have seen uh, very relatively high success rates in the work that they do in helping people find other opportunities, whether it's employment, training or uh, other fruitful activities. So I'm happy to give the undertaking to keep all members advised of what work we can do. And as I mentioned already, Scottish Enterprise are meeting again with the company in a couple of days' time. Thank you. That ends topical questions. The next item of business is a debate on the Local Government and Regeneration Committee's inquiry into the delivery of Regeneration Scotland. Members who wish to take part in this debate should press the request to speak button now.